Well, to find out if that's the case or not, a short time ago I was joined from Canberra by the Treasurer, Wayne Swan. Wayne Swan, we've already had the Henry tax review. We're now about to have a summit to hear speeches from people whose views we mostly already know. You've had four years in government. Why not just get on with making some decisions about tax reform? Well, we certainly have. We've got a very substantial record of tax reform and, in fact, we've implemented something like 32 separate measures which come from the Henry Review. So let's just think about those. $47 billion worth of personal income tax cuts. What we are now doing is getting the resource rent tax through the Parliament, which is going to fund very substantial tax reform, a cut to the corporate rate, a very big cut to taxation for small business, a boost to superannuation, and many other measures that we have put in place deliberately over 18 months, so the time is now ready to have a further discussion about the next steps in tax reform. But well, why, do we need in mind. why do we need a further discussion when there are still 100 outstanding recommendations from that Henry tax review? Well, because those recommendations are, one, are ones in which people have very strong opinions, and certainly the government does. We said there are some of those measures we would not implement, there are some that we are implementing, and we said we would have a staged approach to tax reform. But we've heard tax most reform, of these people's like... opinions as part of the Henry tax review, so why do we need to hear them again? Well, I, I can tell you this, there's a lot of people out there that say to me they want to have a conversation about tax reform. Uh, that report came down 18 months ago. We have put in place a really, a really substantial raft of tax reforms, which are still in the system, and we're going to have a conversation about the future. I think that's perfectly reasonable. I'm looking forward to the discussion over the next couple of days. I think it will be important. A lot of people want to express their point of view, and that's fine by me, and the government wants to listen to it. You talk about looking at the big picture and big reforms. Why then are you ruling out considering changes to a whole range of taxes, including the GST? Uh, because it is a long-held commitment uh, of the government that we will not increase the rate or the base uh, of the GST. We think that punishes uh, low-income earners in particular, we don't think it's a worthwhile tax reform. When the GST came in, it cost a lot of money additional to the revenue raised in compensation. We don't think it's an efficient or fair approach. But, Treasurer, the GST has been in place at 10% for the past 11 years. Exemptions mm. for food, medical services and education have been in place all that time. How is it not worthwhile to examine whether or not that still suits the economy, particularly when you point out all of the things that have changed around um, the global economy and also the nature of our economy? Well, Lee, I understand some people will have a different view from the government, but the government has made a commitment. We've consulted on that commitment. We're maintaining that commitment not to increase the rate or the base of the GST. But having said all that, there's still plenty to talk about on the agenda for the next couple of days. But isn't, if I could just stick with the GST for a second, isn't it the case that that's off-limit, not for economic reasons, but for political reasons, that it would be too controversial for your government to tackle, particularly a government that's in a weak position? All. No, we don't think that's the way to build our tax system. We don't think it's fair. We don't think it's efficient. That's our long-held view, Lee. Do you agree that Australia's ageing population and shrinking tax base mean that at some point higher taxes are going to be essential? Well, Lee, we moved to implement the number one recommendation of the Henry Review, which was to put in place a resource rent tax, and we did that for very good reason. We did it because we thought it was fair that the Australian people got fair value for the resources they owned 100%, and part of the revenue we are using from that is to build up national savings through the superannuation system, particularly for low-income workers, so precisely if I, so if I could get you for the sorry, reasons if I could, that, that if you outlined now. If I could just get you to clarify then, so you are saying that yes, that you think that because of the ageing population, the associated pressures with that, including the shrinking tax revenue base, that we are going to need to have more taxes and higher well, taxes going no, ahead? What I'm saying is we need to grow our economy, we need to make it efficient, we need to make sure our tax base is contemporary and that's why we moved to put in place a resource rent tax and that's why we moved to make sure that some of the revenue from that increased the savings and retirement benefits of some of our lowest paid workers, something that the opposition wants to abolish. Okay, they but is, that, is the resource are, rent tax are, are where, where it begins tax. and ends though, I guess is what I'm asking? Is it going to go further than that? Are the, are the challenges that we confront as a nation significant enough in this area that we're going to need more more taxes and higher taxes going ahead if people want to continue to enjoy the no, levels of government spending they what, No, Lee, what we really need is a growing economy and we need to lift our productivity. You might recall uh, we brought down an intergenerational report uh, over 18 months ago which highlighted the importance of productivity. Tax reform 
is important in that. For example, one of the recommendations that we've picked up from Henry, a very substantial one, is tripling the tax-free threshold. That is a very important reform, not just in terms of fairness, but in terms of encouraging workforce participation. It's those sorts of measures, lifting participation, lifting productivity, those sorts of measures that we need to counter the ageing of the population and the costs that come with it. And that's what the government has been doing. But on those, those points um, mm. around covering the costs associated with the ageing population, isn't it the case that work, workforce participation, productivity, spending cuts, efficiency, all these things that you've raised simply are not going to be enough to cover the hundreds of billions of dollars that are going no, to be required all. to deal with these challenges? N not at all. I mean, what you think we you can make it all up is... with those measures? Well, we're not trying to do that, Lee. What we're trying to do is to lift the productive base of our economy, to lift labour force participation, not just in terms of our response to Henry, but also in our last budget. The centrepiece of that was lifting participation, all part and parcel of responding to the challenges of the mining boom on the one hand, lifting productivity. These are all parts of making our economy more productive, building its capacity over time to cope with the challenges of the future. I mentioned earlier your government's weak political position at the moment. Labor's primary vote is currently 26%. If that number stays where it is, how many members of the Labor caucus do you imagine are going to be happy to stick with the Gillard leadership and sink with the ship? Well, Lee, I don't respond to daily, monthly or six monthly opinion polls. What I respond to is what is right for the country. Getting the basics right in terms of the economy goes to the very core of what this government is about. That's what we're concentrating on. Tax reform is part and parcel of wider reforms, such as putting a price on carbon pollution. All of these things are big, hard reforms. They will bring with it unpopularity in the short term, but the most important thing is to get the policy right for the long term. And I believe the Australian people will support parties who put in place the long-term policies for the future, unlike our political opponents, who simply don't want to face up to the realities of the economy and are not capable of putting in place those sorts of policies for the future. The day after Kevin Rudd was rolled, you told Radio National uh, that the reason was that the Prime Minister had lost support in the community, that the caucus couldn't contemplate the idea of an Abbott Prime Ministership and that there was an, e un an unease in the community over the government's handling of a number of significant issues. Those are exactly the same sorts of issues Labor faces now. Your primary vote then was 35%, now it's 26%. Why were those factors enough to spell the end of Kevin Rudd but not Julia Gillard? Well, I'm not going to go back into those events of uh, over 12 months ago, but what I will say again, and I think this is really important, is that the government's focus is on long-term reform, making sure we get the settings right for the future. I believe getting those things right will bring the political support at the end of the day. Treasurer Wayne Swan, thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.